Find the critical Z alpha divided by 2 value given the following confidence levels, 98, 99, 95, 90. These four confidence levels are the most commonly used confidence levels in confidence interval problems. So we're going to see these time and time again. We're going to see them so often, I would like to show you how to find these critical Z alpha values um, using a special table called a T table. The T table is not normally for Z values, it's normally for T values. So you may not have uh, seen in your course yet what a T value is, but you'll see it soon. But either way, the point is, is that normally a critical Z value is found using a Z table. We're going to, however, use a T table to do it for these four special values. They come up so often, I think it's worthwhile to learn how to use the T table to find them. Why is that? Well, for one thing, there'll be problems or exams where you might have both the T distribution and the Z distribution on one test. And it's kind of nice to be able to use one table to solve most of the problems. That doesn't mean you'll be able to always get away without having a Z table, but, you know, in many cases, the T table by itself will suffice for both types of problems, depending on whether these are the only kinds of confidence levels you're given. The other um, issue is that a T table has more decimal places on it. The Z values are normally rounded to two decimal places, so everything is rounded to the hundredths place, whereas with the T table, the, the values are normally rounded to the thousandths place, so you have an extra decimal place, you have a third decimal place behind the decimal point, and so it gives you a slight bit more precision to your answers. So um, for my taste, um, I like to use the T table for these four values. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We will then learn how to use the Z table to get the same kind of values, but um, for these four, we're going to use the t-table. Let me just show you what a t-table looks like, first of all. Um, it looks a lot like a z-table. However, in this classic example of a t-table, you see that it has the little bell curve drawing, just like you would have on a z-table, because the t-distribution is also bell-shaped in nature. But the important thing here is that they've shaded a tail area. That's different than the z-table. The z-table, you know, the one that we've been using at least, that one gives you area from the z-score to the center, and so it's different. It doesn't give you a tail area. This table, however, this t-table uses tail areas, so we need to know what area is in that tail. Now, to figure that out, I want to point out something about the notation here, this z alpha divided by 2 notation. If I draw a bell curve, if I go ahead and draw a bell curve, and I label a tail here and I shade the area. If I tell you that this tail has alpha divided by 2 area in it, right, that means that the z-score down here at the bottom, it means that that z-score has a special name. It's called z alpha divided by 2. So the pattern is very simple. Whatever is here is the amount of area that you find in the tail beyond that z-score. So there's some z-score on the number line so that beyond that, the probability that you would end up beyond that on the number line is alpha divided by 2. That means the tail area beyond this point is only alpha divided by 2. So that's really the idea. Whatever notation is here is here. Now, you know, for our t-table, we need to know how much area is in the tail. If we can just figure out what alpha is, we can certainly figure out what alpha by 2 is, right? I mean, say I told you that alpha was 20%. Of course, half of alpha is then 10%, so it's pretty easy if we know what alpha is. The question is, how do we figure out alpha? Well, that's actually not so bad. Figuring out alpha is not a difficult thing to do, because there's a nice little relationship that we have between the confidence level and alpha. So let's go ahead and look at that relationship. Okay, so... It turns out that 1 minus the confidence level is actually equal to alpha. 1 minus the confidence level is alpha. So we could set up a little table here to figure out the confidence level. I mean, to figure out the alpha, sorry. The confidence level is given, right? We have 98% for the first example, right? We have 99% for the second example. We have 95 for the third and for the fourth, we have 90. Okay, so we know these values. That we can figure out. Alpha, then, is just going to be, based on this formula, 1 as a percentage is 100%. So if we take 100% and we subtract off the confidence level, we get alpha. 100% minus 98, for example, is 
2%. 100% minus 99 is 1%. 100% minus 95 is 5%. 100 minus 90 is 10%. So what we had to do is figure out what our alpha was, given this confidence level. That's easy, right? We just subtract from 100, and we easily get alpha. And of course, figuring out what alpha by 2 is, that's really simple. Just divide these in half. 1%, 0.5% uh, or 1 half of 1%, 2.5%, 5%, 5 etc., right? And of course, if you wanted to write these as a decimal, this is 0 0.01, this is 0 0.005, this is 0 0.025, and this is 0 0.05. Remember, just move the decimal point over two places, and that gives you the decimal version of those things. And that's all we need. If we know these alpha divided by two values, it's those values that we're supposed to look up on our t-table. So I've gone ahead and wrote these steps out for you and you can copy them down now. Essentially, what we're doing here is using a t-table to find critical z alpha divided by two values. So the steps are really simple. The first step is you have to find your alpha value. We just showed how to do that. Subtract your confidence level from 100%. Step two, you find alpha divided by two. You just divide your alpha in half. That's easy enough. And of course, you look up alpha divided by two on the t-table under, this is the symbol for infinity. It's not very well drawn there, but it's the infinity symbol. You'll see on the table when we zoom into it in a minute here that there's an infinity row at the very bottom of the table. We're going to look up that alpha divided by 2 value under that row, and we will find the appropriate t value, or the appropriate z value, pardon me, the critical z alpha divided by 2 value. So it's a really simple three-step procedure to find these critical z alpha values. So let's go to the t table and see how these are done. Okay, so here's our t-table with an up-close view. You see that it has that little tail shaded there. We're supposed to look up the area we're looking for in the tail. And those areas are expressed next to these little t's that you see. So, for example, t.10 means if you want a 10% area in the tail. t.05 means you want 5% in the tail. t.025 means you want 2.5%. T.01 means you want 1% in the tail. So that's basically how this table reads. Now, the thing about a t-table is, of course, there are only t-values on the table primarily, except for in the very last row of a t-table. So I'm going to scroll this table all the way down to the bottom here until we see this last little row. That last little row has an infinity symbol next to it. These values and only these values on the t-table are actually z-values. They're not t-values at all. They're actually z-values. So this is why we can find certain z-values on the t-table. And you see that we get that extra decimal place of accuracy that we're looking for. So that's why I like to use the t-table for those very special values. Okay, so for our first example, we're going to try to find the tail area to be 0 0.01. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the tail area to be 0 0.01. So when I look across the top here, I see 0 0.01 here in the fourth column over. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up here with this piece of paper. So now we have the fourth column isolated. And I'm going to move straight to the bottom where the infinity symbol was to see what number we find there. So I'm moving it all the way to the bottom there. Looking at what number we find, we find that number there, 2.326. 2.326 is the number we need. That's our critical z value found on a t table. Okay, so the answer we find for the first one we found was 2.326. Let's go back now and look up the critical z value for 99% confidence. Okay, so for this problem, my alpha divided by 2 value is 0 0.005. So I'm looking for t.005. That's my alpha divided by 2 value. So I'll isolate that now, isolate that column, and go all the way down until I see the infinity symbol to get my z value. So there it is. We find that the answer is right here, 2.576. 2.576. Okay, so the answer we found for 99% confidence is 2.576. Now let's go do 95% confidence. 
Okay, this time my alpha divided by 2 value is 0 0.025. So I look here and I see that there's a t, 0 0.025. So it's the third column I'll need to isolate here. So I'm going to isolate the third column and I'm going to scroll all the way down until we see the infinity symbol at the bottom. And sure enough, when I do that, I see that my answer is 1.960. 1.960. The critical Z value for 95% confidence is 1.960. And let's do the last one here, 90% confidence. Okay, for this last one, my alpha divided by 2 value is actually 0 0.05, 0 0.05. That's in the second column, the 0 0.05, T.05. So I'm going to isolate the second column. And once I've done that, I'm going to move now this paper all the way down until we get to where we have the infinity symbol again. And so there's my solution. It's 1.645, the last number there in the table, 1.645. Okay, and for 90% confidence, we find the answer 1.645. And that's it. That's how you find these four classic values using a t-table.